I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today is a very special guest. We are going outside of the box today. We have Rob Blankensop. That's right. You, you might not have heard of this guy, but you should know who it is. He is the head of R&D at Aqualab. That is Speedo's. Um, it's, it's the basement of Speedo somewhere, somewhere over there in the UK. And uh, I, I don't think he should be head of R&D. I think it should be C-suite. It should be chief of something because when it comes down to the technology of Speedo's tech suits, it falls squarely on his shoulders. Rob, how are you doing, buddy? Very well. What, a, what, a, what an introduction. I was a speedo athlete. Just so you know, you, you probably, I don't know how often, you know what, actually this isn't true. I think you actually do talk to athletes quite a bit and we'll get into that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, going back over speedo's history, I was a speedo athlete. And so there was like two things in, in your career. If you, if you want to be, you want to be an Olympic champion. Another thing is you kind of want, you want to be a speedo athlete. It's, it's a feather in your yeah. cap of being in the speedo family. So I was lucky enough to do that. And when and looking back into the history of Speedo and, and, and when technology started to, to evolve, it's uh, that precursor to, to Faskin, the Faskin history, it's noted as starting back in 1992, and that's when I became a Speedo athlete. But back then, buddy, I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to educate you. You're the smart okay. guy in this interview, but I'm just going to, I'm going to educate you. <laughs> I we like wore, it. I like it. We wore the S2000. This little thing yep. was called a paper suit. Yep. And I went from wearing Lycra to this paper suit and I hated it. I hated the suit because it took me, it only took us like five minutes to get into the suit. Couldn't just pop it on. It had zips in it. <laughs> it was just so <laughs> tense. But um, it was a fast suit and, we, and it was cutting edge of technology and there was a lot of pride in that. But that, that eight year precursor until the launch of Fast Skin was, um, you know, it's something that we follow. But I feel like a dinosaur, buddy. I feel yeah. old. And, and what I'm hoping that you can do today is, is to tell our listeners a little bit about this, this technology and everything that goes into it. And I don't want you to use all the innovative and interesting, cool stuff that Speedo PR came up with, because I'm going to use that. Okay. But, um, right. It's uh, how long you've been with in, in R&D at Speedo? So I, I've been in R&D at Speedo for six years in various roles. Um, I lead the R&D team now that kind of works on all the Faskin. Um, so it's, it's me here talking, but there's a lot of people behind me that kind of work with me and work, we work together on it. Um, and also a lot of people have come before me. Obviously, I wasn't working in 1992, 1996, 2000 and beyond. So there's a lot of people that we're kind of standing on their shoulders as well. And I think it's really important to know about that evolution and, and, and the people who've been involved in, in, in getting to where we are now. So, um, yeah, my, my background is, uh, is, is not a swimmer. I'm a, I'm a technical person. I have a, a PhD in mechanical engineering from a university in England. Um, I've worked with other brands within sports engineering. I'm basically a failed sportsman, and I just figured that I can just be a scientist in sport, and that's where I'll make my mark in, in, in it. Well, I, you know, the funny thing was – it used to be if you were in science or you were in, 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 if you were in your area of the world, you were a nerd and now you're a rock star. Yeah, I think, it, uh, yeah, I think Big Bang Theory's done a lot for that. <laughs> I, I think, no, it's, it's true. You're the rock star. The script has been flipped. You're the cool guy in the room and everybody sort of looks at you in awe. Uh, for, so for folks, before we get into the, the fun nitty gritty stuff, let's just, let's just, I, I, I know that all of our, our peers out there know swimming speedo history. They yeah. think they do, but, uh, everyone's like, yeah, it was, it was launched by, uh, it was launched in Australia back when the freestyle was called the Australian crawl. It yeah. was, um, what's his name? Alexander McRae. Alexander McRae. Alec yeah. Mann, he was a, he immigrated from the Scottish Highlands to, to Australia. 1910 was a milkman scraped together his money and started his hosiery company, McRae and hosiery company. And, yeah. uh, and then made his scratch selling socks to the Australian army during world war one 
made enough scratch to launch really launch his his swimwear and it, and it was it was a really cool name for the first the first swimsuit that he came out with do you, do you know the name um i'm testing you i'm testing now you. you're testing me was it uh was it fortitude oh my god it was fortitude and it was like but it was like race it was like racer back racer yeah. back something and but it, the name was kind of cool, and I'm like, wow, you know, Speedo has the best names for their suits in terms of marketing. Yeah. But, but here's the thing: going back to 1927 with the launch of Fortitude, it was uh, they were on their game. They were really on their game. So I, 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 I kind of, I'm trying yeah. to think of a movie script, and I want to imagine you going back in time, and uh, and 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 being the being the, the development guy. I just want to put you in that room. Do you yeah. know anything about that that suit from the 1920s? Yeah, I do a little bit. I mean, what they were doing back then is what we try and do now, uh, and and innovation and develop and R and D and it is at the heart of Speedo, um, because it has been from the very beginning. When you go back to the twenties, and essentially what they were trying to do is is solve a problem to the person who was wearing a swimsuit. So solving a problem, which was at the time, coverage was obviously important in a swimsuit, and the materials they were making swimsuits out of were kind of thick knitted jackets with buttons and things on and jumping water with one of those on i don't know if you ever do that uh kind of thing in school when you're younger and you have to do the life saving and you jump in with your clothes on and it all just gets weighed down you know that was the reality of what swimwear was and swimming was a different kind of sport there was you know different strokes or less strokes should i say um and the problem they were trying to solve is just how can we make people move easier in the water and that's what the racer back is about. It's about thinking about the design of the swimsuit so that you can move more freely in the water. And then part of that was with the materials as well, because how can you reduce the amount of water it's going to take up and, and, and make it you easier to free and essentially allow you to swim faster? Because if you're not being dragged back by the, uh, the, the, the suit, then you can swim faster. So they were exactly doing what we were doing. They just were at the very, very beginning when the problems were really big and the improvements you could make were really big as well. So yeah, it's, I mean, we're all following in Alexander McRae's footsteps really in what he did and that's continued throughout. And, you know, if you look at the history of Speedo and we, the thing with anything, when you bring something new is people have to change their mindset and they have to challenge where their head is at with something and and you'll see it in in a lot of things and we see it a lot more nowadays because you have platforms where you can message people to tell them what you think of your of their their platforms but generally speaking when you introduce newness it becomes difficult and controversial and that's i suppose again what we we do through our innovations because we challenge the normal we create a new normal and um and and we've done that speedo and i think i can't remember the dates off the top of my head but i know that at one of the Olympics in the 60s, I think it was the Los Angeles Olympics. I can't remember the athlete exactly. Um, and this is, you, you may have done your research better than me, but um, she was nearly disqualified from the race because she was showing too much shoulder. Not because oh, she was getting this, I don't think that was Los Angeles. Was it not LA? Was it in the United States? I believe so, yeah. Uh, LA, LA, that was that was 84 that was the L, that was 84 by then you could show as much shoulder as you wanted we were, we were, we were this, is, this is this is way back but yeah uh, uh should we call it challenging of the rules and, and things have been around for a while and uh, yeah it, it, there's a lot of history in that and but we're doing the same stuff we're trying to solve problems and and we're trying to find better solutions to those problems i what i appreciate is your respect for McRae all these years later and for what they were doing. I just, I appreciate the deference that you, that you're, that you're showing. And it's, yeah. uh, yeah. It's, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. The, I mean, uh, yeah, if, you take, if you take speedo out of swimming, it's a completely different sport. <laughs> now here's the thing. I, and, and it's, it's from, from somebody who, who owns, owns businesses in swimming and, and, and speedo has always been at the forefront. In, in a sense, they have been dragging the international governing body, the Olympics, uh, all of the national governing bodies sort of along. And they do this with, uh, with the professionalism they bring to the sport, research and development, their marketing and advertising, the messaging, telling the story of the sport and saying you can always be more. Speedo is the tip of the spear there. It always has been. And a lot of, a lot of people will watch Speedo, see what they do, and down downstream, they try to emulate that. And uh, what's interesting is that you are at the 
at the, at the epicenter of yeah. the innovation. And so I, I'm in, in a, I was intimidated to, to have this conversation <laughs> this morning, but at the same time, kind of excited. So yeah, let's, I want to, I want to get back to just some, some data cause we're, we're, we're I want to get up, up to speed and where we are right now. Right. Yeah. But Speedo's stats are extraordinary. I, I'm kind of curious as to whether or not they, they weigh on your shoulders when you're thinking about what you are going to be doing in terms of innovation and design. But Speedo has been dominant over the years uh, since 1984, averaging a 65% dominant rate in terms of just Olympic medals won. And, and uh, I, I'm actually going back in here and I, I got it all sitting in front of me, but I'm, you know, first thing I did was I went to the 1992 Olympics, my Olympics and I went, wow, Speedo. 72% of the gold medals were worn in Speedo, 61% silver, 45% bronze. And this is kind of consistent throughout the Olympic years with 2008. And 2008 was 94% gold, 78% silver, 94% bronze, one in Speedo. That's just so dominant. Is that something that, that weighs on you and your team in R&D? <laughs> it's a hard, that's a high bar, buddy. No, it is, it is. Um... I don't think it's, I think it's something that weighs on the whole company and, 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 and not just in innovation, but every little part of what contributes to those, to, to what we do for the athletes. And, uh, and it's for the athletes as well. Uh, you know, the Olympics is a big deal for them. It's like the pinnacle of their career. If you compare it to kind of other sports, there's other big kind of events and, and stuff. So for, for me, it's, it's, it's about just making sure that we put the, the, the athlete on the, on the block with the big, the most confidence they have in their suits in, in the best suit that they can have. And, 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 and as I say, the ingredients of that is culmination of not just our work, but all the work that's come before us and all the other departments that kind of touch it and, and are involved in it. So it, it's, it's daunting in some ways, but it's really exciting in others because you have such a great platform after which to build. And the other thing is we have the greatest athletes to work with as well. And that for me is just an absolute pleasure. If anybody wants to be working in a field, you want to be working with the best and being able to take suits and get feedback from Caleb Dressel and Ryan Murphy and Nathan Adrian and Kathleen Baker. It's, it's a dream. It's, and, and yeah, it, it's great. Are you guys on, on group chats? Are you, are you on group texts? Do you, do you know, do you like, <laughs> they're like, they're like Rob. Rob, I don't like this. The fit's wrong here. Is, 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 does that happen in the, behind the scenes? Um, yeah, in some, with some of them. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. I won't I like say that. who, but some of them. <laughs> I, I was just teasing, but, uh, but you know what? It's a, if I remember back in 92, there was a lot of engagement on, on the speed of, on the, on, on, in terms of speed of management. And we had, you know, the interesting thing about the company is that like I knew the, I knew the, the people on deck and they became EVPs or presidents. I knew them as, as young as I was 12 years old. They were always there and yeah. there was a relationship and you knew who they were. And they're like, how do you like this goggle? And um, so that has yeah. always been a part of the rapport. And, uh, right. but I imagine it's a much higher level now. It's, it, it's, it's throughout everything we do. And, you know, it's not just in swimming. It's in, if you want to succeed in anything that somebody's going to use, whether it's a swimsuit or it's a mobile phone, you need to understand how people are going to use it and what they feel about it and how they use it and observe it. And you can't do that from sitting behind a desk. You have to be in front of the athletes and see what they're doing and how they react and ask the questions and, and be involved. And, you know, everything is, is it's a lot of it's about relationships uh, as much as it is about kind of the stuff we do. And we are in a collaboration with the athletes and that's not just, athletes at the highest level because you know we always kind of gravitate towards the elite athletes and the top guys the olympians but everybody's using our suit from racing at age group upwards and so we don't just focus on the elites we're in we're involved with speaking and, and liaising and talking and getting feedback from from all levels and ensuring that they're involved in the development as well this is not an elite suit that is used by everybody this is a suit that's used by everybody including elites if you're out there and you're listening, folks, we are talking to Rob Blankensop, and he is the head of R&D at Speedo. And, and while you're listening along, you could pause if you're, if you're listening and, and pop over to at Speedo.com, Speedo.com or SpeedoUSA.com if you're in the United States. We are talking to the smartest man at Speedo. <laughs> um, it's, on this podcast, we're calling him the smartest man. He probably is the smartest man at Speedo. 
Dead about head of R and D, Rob <laughs> Blankensop. So let's get into let's get into fast skin, and because yeah. it's uh, the the cool the the provocative part of this is that it's it's inspired by um, fast skin is inspired by shark skin, and that started back as early as two thousand. And yeah. the what's interesting today, and with the information that I read, is that with with the, with the latest iterations of, of and design, is that you're going back into not shark, you're going to the ANSA, you're going to the, to the, was it the, the Museum of History in London and looking at ancestors of sharks and, and in terms of trying to find the, the, the skin of the, the right shark to, to be inspired by, but also working with Formula One. Help me unpack this, buddy. Okay, yeah, right. So um, why, why, I think the first question is why look at shark skin? And um, the reason for that is there's there's a field of uh, of science called biomimicry, which is kind of like trying to copy what nature has done. If there is one of the greatest designers that's out there, it's nature, and it's it it, it through survival of the fittest, through 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 the natural selection, it tests and it change and it challenges and 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 it, and it creates the most optimum design for something whether that is a shark in the shark skin um and and other kind of things as well that you'll see in your everyday life where biomimicry has been used and you know the bullet train in japan is a great example which is kind of based upon the the the, the front of, uh, of, of the kingfisher and the way that it kind of enters the water that's why it has an extended uh, nose front on it so we look at biomimicry because with sharks they're moving through the water and they have evolved to be incredibly efficient moving through the water because they need to use as little energy as possible because if they have used the least energy then they'll survive their pass on their genes and, and us and so forth so that's why we look at shark skin and it's not just shark skin we also look at other kind of um uh water-based animals as well that you know have to move through the water and not have drag affect them um so that that's kind of where the basis of it came from in 2000 and what we've done this time is, is slightly different in that in 2000 um the suit was kind of had a, an application of a, of a texture or a, 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 through the fabric across the whole of the suit um, to try and reduce the drag and but what we've done this time is we've looked at it slightly differently and, and by working with the Natural History Museum in London and, and a, a number of other experts, um, including um, experts from Formula One and their understanding of aerodynamics and, and how they imply, uh, apply that within their sport. Um, but we've also talked with um, a company that uh, and people who apply um, paint to ships because of reducing drag in ships and what they do in that space and, and bringing their understanding of hydrodynamics in. Um, but we, we, what we were looking at is, if you look along the shark, the texture isn't the same. So if you look at the front of the shark to the back of the shark and go along it, the texture will change. And that's because the shape of the shark is changing. And so the um, texture has evolved, or the, the shark has evolved, to channel the water in different ways as it goes along the surface. Um, and so what we were looking at is, well, rather than applying a texture across the whole of the, of the, of the suit, how do we apply texture in certain places where we need to do certain things with the water to improve the drag? And so <laughs> the, the science of it's quite interesting because what you would think is make somebody as slippery as possible and they will go as fast as they can in the water. But actually there's kind of a, a really a complicated kind of interaction that happens at the surface of, of, of a body in, in any fluid, whether it's air or water. And that is actually, if you can rough up the surface, that will actually improve the drag because there's two types of drag that are, is occurring when you're swimming. You've got um, form drag, which is the shape of your body being forcing water out the way um, that causes drag. And then you've got skin friction drag or, or surface drag um, is sometimes referred to. And that's just the, 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 the friction of the water passing over the, 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 the fabric or your body or your skin or whatever it is. And so what we're doing is actually roughing up the surface by adding textures in certain areas that creates a very small for one of a, a turbulent uh, a, a rough area of water which actually then increases uh well improves the the, the drag of, of the suit now trying to visualize that's very difficult but there's a really really nice example i can give you that kind of explains it and that's the golf ball so if you look at a golf ball it's got dimples on it and that's actually a rough texture now you would think that if you had a very smooth golf ball and you hit it, it would go further than a 
dimpled golf ball because it's smooth, the air can move around it. But that's not the case. The actual dimples on the surface of the golf ball, that roughness basically allows the air to hug around the surface for longer and it creates a smaller wake at the back. And that's what causes the drag, the wake. And if you think about a car or a lorry, that kind of turbulent air that gets moved around at the back, that causes the, basically sucking the, 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 the object back. And so what, we've, what a golf ball is doing is channeling that air around. Um, and, and actually, funnily enough, that the, if you look into the rules of golf, they very, very carefully control the number of dimples and the size of the dimples that you can have on your golf ball because it makes such a big difference to your to your shot. So, yeah. Be careful. Fina's going to start. <laughs> They're going to limit your dimples. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. And, and, uh, and yeah, yeah, maybe. But we're doing that. It's the same kind of principle in our suits. So if you look at our uh, uh, laser pure intense suit, uh, because that's our kind of sprint suit that the, that we, we kind of put this technology into. You'll see it in certain locations, and that's locations where we want to channel the water over the body. So obviously on the female, it's on on the front, and on the berm and on the on the male suits on the berm as well. Now, yeah, it, it's a really complex uh, physics and, and problem, and 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 we are having to jump a gap of science because it's so difficult to measure these things but that's kind of the principle behind what we've done and, and we've worked with the natural history museum and other experts because we need to bring this kind of different understanding in to challenge how we do things and and that's how innovation works is if you just kind of have the same kind of thinking you're going to have the same results if you bring people with other thinking in other ideas that's how you can really push on and, and, and make a difference. And if you look across different industries, you can see how that's done and, and, and pairing biomimicry in does that as well. You know, it's so, it, it's counterintuitive. I'm, I appreciate the lesson because uh, yes, you're <laughs> right. I, I'm like, Hey, why, why, why isn't the golf ball slippery? Yeah. yeah. I, I've no, no one has ever told me and uh, I'm, I've arrived this late in my life and just learned it. I appreciate that. And I'm sure many listeners appreciate it as well. It's a, uh, you know the funny thing about suits and culturally if you're if you're among elite athletes if you're if you're in that in that fraternity and sorority of of olympic champions is that uh, a lot of people feel like the suit is almost like a religion it's all about belief now i know it's on your shoulders to provide the tech and innovation to to support that belief but so many athletes go by feel they put a suit on and if it feels good they're like, hey, this is fast. 100%. Yeah. And um, I can tell you that we know that some, some athletes are wearing suits and we know the suits are slow. We're not saying what brands they are, but we, we know those suits are slow. And, uh, but they like the way they feel. It, I understand and respect everything you're bringing to this in terms of the technology, but is that something you run into? It's like, hey, you know, the tech is there, but how's the fit? It's, um, it's, it's so important. It's yeah, so, so important. And, yeah, and, and everything's counterintuitive. Like everybody's thinking it's, uh, you think, you know, something, but you don't really know. No, it, it the perception in anything is, is so important, especially in things, obviously in sports. And, and look, the, the suit is one component of the whole thing that comes together for an athlete. So, it's so important to have the right suit for you and the right suit is more than just a technology in it that makes you go fast. Um, and, you know, we're talking about marginal gains here. And, and if you're not comfortable in a suit, are you going to perform to the same level? You know, there's so much that can be around, not a placebo because that's the wrong word, but that kind of like the, the, the mental space that you're in. So within, when we develop suits, we don't just look at the science we kind of have three areas that we're looking at the most important or not the most important, but the most important thing is to, 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 to look at them in, in, in concert with each other, because um, we've got obviously be fast, which is what our technology is trying to do. So if you swim in the water, you will, you know, the technology will, will, will contribute to that. But the other thing is feeling fast and, and feeling fast is about how you perceive the feeling of a suit. And if you get a suit on and it, you don't feel like it's fitting right, it's not what you like, you're not going to swim well because it's you know it, you're, you're gonna your mind's gonna be a different place you're gonna be you know thinking about something and, and, and it'll distract you so we have to make sure that we we 
we look at the perception and that's why we put so much effort into making sure that we engage with the athletes when we're developing the suits we don't take a few months to do this this takes a significant amount of effort in the last development for laser racer intent um oh it, we, we kind of traveled over 380,000 miles four continents we've tested over 300 swimmers you know we've we've we really want to get the perception and get feedback on that perception and understand it and we're not there because the, there is kind of more work always to be done and and, and it, it, it's it's a challenge but you're absolutely right that there's more to this than just a suit with a science a suit with something scientific in it you've got to really kind of make it work for you well shame on me we've gone on many many different tangents and i haven't brought up probably the most interesting part for our readers which is that caleb dressel is going to be wearing i think he's going to be wearing every suit throughout the faskin era and uh he's going to be going for world record world records in the 50 meters short course meters freestyle yeah. uh Correct. Now, now a lot of details haven't been shared. Uh, this is this is going to be a this is this is going to be shot out to the world like a shotgun, and I'm telling you, everyone is going to watch this, consume this media. It's one of the coolest things that I have heard in terms of a marketing campaign since I, you weren't around. I'm sorry, Rob, you weren't around, but <laughs> this old man was when Phelps when Phelps did his eight gold medals. That was yeah, a yeah. huge moment. That was a huge yeah. marketing uh, moment. Uh, a great marriage with a company. But if you go back that time and you're really witnessing it, the launch of the laser racer in 2008 was just as big a story. Like every time you read about the Olympics, you were reading about this suit that was inspired by NASA, NASA technology. And it was just like, people remember that that one thing stuck in their brain. They're like, yeah, Michael Phelps swims in a, in a space suit. Um, I love those sort of marketing campaigns. I really take my hat off to the folks who, who, who understand the importance of story and delivering a product to, to the market. And um, I think that what's going on with Dressel is interesting. How, how much do you know about this? And will you be there when, when he's performing? I know a lot about it. Um, I would like to try and claim it was my idea, but <laughs> I think we were, it wasn't my idea. I'm, uh, but I do remember sitting in the back of a, a car in America in the last development after we'd just fitted on Caleb and said, wouldn't it be cool if you put Caleb in a 2008 suit, just see how fast he could go. I, I think that was probably a seed in someone's head somewhere and uh, hopefully it kind of came through, but you know, it's been 20 years since Faskin, uh, from 2000, obviously. Um, it's uh, 20 years of, of, of further developments and obviously a lot of rule changes in that time from FINA. And so things have changed, but swimmers are still getting faster and it is kind of really, interesting to be able to look at what we've done historically and try and bring that to now and see how it how it would be affect how how Caleb would be in that suit um so um yeah we, we, we've been involved in it um in terms of going back and creating the suits um and, and making suits for for Caleb for this particular event um and and it's been really great for people like myself who weren't around um to, to at the time to to kind of revisit kind of history and pull the patterns out for the suits and, you know, find the materials and speak to the people who were involved in it, who are still around. And um, there's a history there. And I think it's, you know, something that other brands necess don't necessarily have that kind of history that we have. Uh, and it's something I've, as I've said before, really lucky that we feel that we've got that history that we can tap into. And, you know, we have one of the best suits that's ever been created, obviously that had been broke all those records, won all those medals that you spoke about at the beginning. It's really, I mean, just from just, as a swim fan, as an, and as a scientist, and as a just a geek, I'm just fascinated to see how fast Caleb can really go in one of these suits because he is just unreal. He's he's just on another level, and add that suit in, and that's going to be really really cool. If you're listening in. We're talking to Rob Blankensop. He is the head of R and D for Speedo. He is the smartest guy in the room. We are very <laughs> lucky to have him here. If you're listening, go ahead and pop over to speedo.com or speedousa.com if you're in the United States. We're talking about Speedo tech and the development of tech. We've gone all the way back to 1927, and we're bringing it to present day with our global star, Caleb Dressel, who, frankly, if, if, we're, if we're being honest, folks, he is in the hunt 
to win eight medals. And who knows which color those medals will be, but they many of them could be gold. We're not going to say they're all going to be gold, but he absolutely has a shot at them all being gold. And uh, he is an exciting athlete, uh, a physical specimen that is extraordinary. He has a 42-inch vertical leap, and he is going to be testing all the fast skin suits. And he's going to be he's going to be suiting up to race. Is that correct? And and, the and fifty meter short course free. Two thousand and eight suit specifically is the one we're we're going to put him in. So well, I, the, I thought he was going to do going to wear a few of them. This, but this is just the one. Just I think what we do. Yeah, it's just the one. And the reason for that is is that to get those optimum conditions and to get Caleb in the best. Like we uh, we wouldn't want to just uh, we wouldn't want to wear him out on some other suits. We want to really kind of get him to dive in with that and be at the peak of his performance. We, which, just, heard from, we, just, we just heard from the Speedo studio and they confirmed. Yeah. The half round. They just said 2008 only. Which, but, and, and here's the thing, and, and, that's, and that's actually, that's very, very smart, and we should explain why. The, um, it is a thing, it is a swimming culture thing to wear the full body suit in practice. People do that, that's what they do, and it's a... Uh, so what, what, what folks do is they, is they they'll, you, you can be mid season, you can be tired from training and you'll put on a full body suit just to see how you feel and feel the speed. It gives you some lift in the water and it gives you a sense of where you're going to be at the end of the season. And so when I heard about this, I'm like, did, did it, did a swim nerd explain this to Speedo? Um, to, did, but I don't think they did. I think Speedo is, is, is so immersed and so close to the culture there aware of how unique and interesting this is, but that is something that people do. And everybody loves that because sometimes people will share on their personal media, Hey, I'm suiting up today. I'm tacking up today. Yeah. And uh, so I think this is going to be a huge success with one of the most exciting athletes on earth and one of the most exciting brands that has ever been in history. And uh, so you said <laughs> you're going to be there. Uh, I'm not going to be there just because of there. COVID. Just because of COVID, unfortunately, I'd, I like if it hadn't been for COVID, I would have absolutely been there. Um, but hey, it is what it is. But I mean, yeah, it's it's all about that kind of you know opportunity. And Caleb is just an incredible athlete. And, and uh, as a raw athlete, you know, just spending time with these guys, you just realize how much they sacrifice to get to where they get to, and the effort they put in, and they're just on it's just it's 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 humbling to see you know the the we 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 visit a lot of our athletes obviously not at the moment but you know we we travel all around the world to make sure we see them and wherever we go whether it's in asia whether it's in australia whether it's america whether it's just locally in in, in the uk the, these guys are super athletes and caleb is a super athlete as well if you're listening out there we're going to be we're going to be sharing the details of this event over and over and over and, and increasing as we, as we come up on the event. So you're going to see all details on swimswim.com and all our social channels. The, uh, I've covered a lot. And if we want to, if you want to cover some of the topics that, that, that you just let me know, Rob, but I, I do want to say something that, that I found interesting and it's like a, you take for granted, but it's, um, you're probably not thinking about Tokyo too much. You're probably thinking about 2024. You're, you're way ahead of the curve. Is that correct? Uh, I'm thinking about 24 and 28 and 32 and beyond. Really, it's like this is not um, this is not a, what's what's the word? It's, this is this is for, this is infinite. This is always on for us. We we we're always trying to make it better. So it's not about ever setting ourselves a deadline. We always have the deadlines to work within. Obviously, we have to make sure that we have new suits coming and, and new technologies and releasing them when they're ready. But we, we we're thinking way ahead, definitely. I am so disappointed. I wanted to pull up the speedo history and, and to stump you so that at least I would look like I, I was, I at least had history in, in my wheelhouse, and even though you're the scientist, but you just, you, you have delivered in the entire podcast and I'm so impressed. Robbie, will you come back? Happily. Anytime. I love it. I, yeah. You have, you have to come back. I think we need to get granular with, with the tech and uh, I, something tells me that you can do that. And it might be something that 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 makes sense on the on the run up to the Olympics next spring. Uh, for everybody out there listening, Rob Blankensop, head of Blankensop, head of R and D at Speedo, the smartest man <laughs> under the Speedo brand. They keep him in the basement; it's why right here. But they let yeah. him out every so often to talk to the athletes. 
And uh, we really enjoyed talking to you. Any parting thoughts? I, I just think it's like a really difficult time at the moment with COVID and, and it's really hitting the swimming world. And, you know, we will come out the other side of this. And I, and I know from speaking to people and at all levels, it's been a really difficult time. And, and, and there is kind of like, hopefully, uh, light at the end of the tunnel. So um, I think just, it's gonna be really exciting 2021, not only for Speedo, but for swimming in general. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.